What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe in your potential, and I want to see that thing that you've got inside you explode out into the world to have a big impact for you, your family, and the world. So to help you on your journey today, we're going to learn from personal coach and monk, Gaur Gopal Das, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Rule number one is my personal favorite, and I'd love to know which one you guys like the best. And as always, guys, as you're watching, if you hear something that really, really resonates with you, please leave it down in the comments below and put quotes around it so other people can be inspired and when you write it down it's much more likely to stick for yourself as well. Enjoy! Do you know something? In the game of life you're playing a cricket match against an entity called the mind. No one on planet earth can stop you from accomplishing and achieving what you want if you can bat against the googlies that the mind bowls at you. How many of you have experienced that the mind bowls googlies? Good. When it comes to exercising and jogging, how many of you know that the mind bowls googlies? Majja. Soja. How many of you have trouble in studying? Raise your hands as students. <laughs> My God. And you come here, you hear all of these things. Don't get distracted by WhatsApp. Don't get distracted by internet pornography. Don't get distracted by Twitter. Don't get distracted by Facebook. Study. Don't get distracted by birds to do bird watching. <laughs> Study. All these distractions. Idhar aake kuch updesh dete kuch log sadhu log aapko. So one father was telling his son, Dekh, dekh, tere class mein ho, Lucy hai na, Lucy. Dekh, dekh, first time hai wo. Aur tu nala ek fail ho gaya. Ho bola, dekh, dekh, ke hi fail ho gaya mein usko. Dekh, dekh, ke hi to fail hoa mein usko. I'll tell you something. My God. Why? Because the mind doesn't want you to win the game of life. How many of you wanted to wake up early in the morning, raise your hands? Only wanted, I asked. <laughs> wanted to wake up early in the morning. And how many of you have done something called as setting an alarm clock? And then after setting the alarm clock, that's an alarm. <laughs> Whether you want it or not, it rings. And when it rings, the mind puts its first googly. What does the mind do? by putting the googly makes you clean bold when you do the first snooze. You are out. You are out. If you snooze, you are out. I want to say one thing. Just one. And probably this will change the direction of your life. You know something when you snooze the alarm? What happens? You decide to give in to the mind's ball. And this is how your morning begins, by giving in to the mind. Saberi ki shuruaat hoti hai, is baller se clean bold hoke, aage kya match jitenge? Ye to din ki shuruaat hai, by giving in. And it's no problem giving in, sleeping five minutes extra is no problem. The problem is you develop the attitude of giving in. You tell yourself that what I decided last night is not as important. What is important is what the mind says. Because we listen. I'll tell you something, my humble advice. Because it's not just about getting up in the morning, it's about every aspect of life. Whether it's your work, if you're working, whether it's your study, if you're studying, whatever we do. The problem is, it's not about one thing. It reflects in every area of life. That's why I say it. अगर चार बजे नहीं उठना मालूम है ना अपने से नहीं होता चार बीस का अलार्म लगाओ लेकिन चार बीस को उठो डोंट अलाउ दैट स्नूस देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल स्लेजिंग इन क्रिकेट वे द ओपोनेंट टीम कम्स एंड गिव्स गाली टू द बैट्समैन गाली दे ट्राई टू डिस्ट्रैक्ट देम एंड टेक देअर फोकस अवे वन थिंग दैट सचिन इज अडोर्ड फॉर in the history of cricket his sledging hasn't bothered him this man is cool 
are you cool when people do sledging against you in the game of life are you cool or you lose your cool there will always be people who are out of control can you stop a guy from criticizing you can you start an opponent team from sledging coach nahi kar sakte it's called things which are out of our control people are out of our control sometimes are situations in your control many times no the guy who was batting was expecting an in swing ball and that's what the bowler bowled and one gush of wind an in swing becomes an out swing and is caught out lot of things situations people are just out of our control how many of you think question paper is in your control <laughs> and when things go wild na i'll tell you what happens with us this is what happens with us you know this is what happens with us see see how it comes up we react the stimulus of a person sledging against us criticizing pulling us down envious of us conspiring politicking makes us react and form out hey to ever we start reacting also and look at this this is also sealed The question is do you want to be a seven up can or a oxy cool bottle of water and i'm sure a lot of us would say is prabhu ji humko to dusra kuch sochta hi nahi hai prabhu ji and thus in our life we will always have a stimulus and we can choose to respond because between the stimulus and response is our choice a great personality is not born in the maternity ward a great personality is born by the choices that one makes and therefore when there are all kinds of stimuli we have to learn how to respond if we are not strong spiritually it is impossible If we are not strong culturally, it is impossible. All this sounds great and good, and we know yes, I want to do it. I can't be a can of soda. I want to be a water bottle. But is it so easy? No. That is why coming here is so important. That is why these foundational ethics of spirituality are so crucial in this age. As you, all of you are going to be successful in your own areas of life, if not cricket per se, and thus. we have to learn how to respond what is the most selfish one lettered word i isn't it everything revolves around i iphone <laughs> ipad <laughs> ipod and the man says i paid <laughs> what did everything revolves around the i and what does i stand for i stands for expectations i should be treated like this i should be loved like this i should be dealt with like this i should be respected like this i should be given these many marks i should not be given this you're all leading a life of super high expectations everything revolves around my opinions my desires my likes my dislikes i love this i want this i don't want this i i i i i you think life will be a very happy life when it revolves around i from our childhood we have grown up like this we've only learned to take and everyone has to fulfill my expectations everything has to be up to my expectations therefore when people come to god people come to temple also they're only asking give me what i want no one comes to say i love you i want to, i want to give you when the president of the united states john f kennedy came up to stage for his first presidential speech his voice rumbled into the public address system when he said ask not 
what the country can do for you ask what you can do for the country and so we are saying ask not what god can do for you ask what you can do for god but no one asks that because the i is so big my expectations my desires my things are so powerful that even when i come to a temple and ring a bell all i'm doing is asking the more we lead a life of i our i will always be frustrated because people don't exist in this world to just fulfill your expectations therefore ladies and gentlemen the most selfish one lettered word is i which stands for expectations and therefore avoid this word how do you avoid this word be realistic in your expectations apekshaye karne mein koi problem nahi hai but understand that not everyone will fulfill your expectation and secondly avoid this word i by trying to serve others you know why because when you want to be served you are dependent on people they may not serve you when you want to serve who can stop you when you want respect people may not respect you but when you want to give respect who can stop you when you want to be loved you may not be loved but when you want to give love who can stop you when you want in charity people may not give you in charity but when you want to give charity who can stop you and therefore learn to begin your journey from i to you the more you want for yourself you will remain frustrated the more you want to give you will remain happy when you want to achieve success in your career in your academics in your pro business in your profession we will fail and that's the example of the giraffe when the baby giraffe is born falls from such a high distance straight on the ground the mother positions herself right above the baby giraffe and guess what she does first gives it a hard kick bacche ka janam hota hai aur maa aake khat se laat marti hai to bachcha samajhta nahi abhi to aaya hai zindagi mein matlab laat mar ye kaun laat mara laat ka matlab kya hai malum nahi usko sacha na ek jhatka milta hai usko so as it just coming out of that impact jhatka the mother gives a bad second harder kick now the guy understands agar main kuch kiya nahi to ye chalta rahega silsila so this baby giraffe starts getting up on its wobbly legs you know on its wobbly legs and as the baby giraffe gets up on the wobbly leg thoda khada ho ke khada hona sikha na pad ek aur laat marti hai ma phir gir ke he gets up and starts running and then the mother giraffe goes hugs the baby and starts kissing the baby you know why because the baby giraffe's flesh is very soft and supple and hyenas and lions love it the mother knows that i can't be with the baby giraffe all the time i have to go and get food for the baby how would i protect it isliye pehle hi ek aisi laat maro ki ye uthna sikhe aur phir jaise thoda utha na to ek aur laat maro to yaad rahe aur phir uthna sikhe zindagi bhi maa mother giraffe jaisi hai kai baar laat marti hai we fail we should get up and we'll fail again we should get up and like i always say don't just go through life grow through life it's quite amazing isn't it that when something stuck in our tooth the tongue just keeps going to that tooth until unless that stuff is out of our tooth it just keeps going there now this 31 other teeth in our mouth when nothing stuck the tongue can go there and say hey wow look there's nothing stuck here and go to one of the other tooth where there's nothing stuck and say hey look amazing there's nothing stuck here but is the nature of the tongue that it keeps going to where something is stuck and surely we have to deal with it whenever i travel in my handbag i always have dental floss and a box of toothpicks with me just in case something is stuck i have to take it out certainly we have to deal with it at the same time there's a lot of other good things that we can focus on ladies and gentlemen it's not just the nature of the tongue isn't it the nature of the mind as well when there is a problem an issue stuck in a certain area of our life 
the mind keeps going to that problem and just gets stuck into the negativity of trying to deal with it. But there's 31, or shall I say many, many more, good things happening in so many different areas of our life where there's no problems, no issues stuck. Yet, the mind only keeps going to those areas where there are problems. It is necessary, therefore, for all of us that we focus on the good that is happening in our life and deal with the bad or the problems that are happening in our life. Let us not consume our minds with negativity. Let us consume our minds with positivity. Focus on the positive and deal with the negative. Most often, if not always, our lives seem to be out of balance. And when lives are out of balance, it makes us very irritable. You know, when we drive a car, we always drive a car on, and a car has four wheels. A rhetorical thing to say, isn't it? We drive a car on these four wheels. And these four wheels in the car of life represent first wheel, your personal life, your health, your mind, yourself, the things that you love to do, the things that you would want to do, not have to do. Most times we live a life of have to do. I have to study. I have to work. I have to pay my bills. I have to pay the taxes. I have to do this and I have to do that. I have to go for this social function. I don't have a choice. I have to, have to, have to, have to. Where did the love to go? We just end up living a life of have to's and have forgot about our own selves. By subscribing to the pressures that come from all fronts in our lives, we've forgotten to live our own lives. We don't have time to unwind. We don't have time to spend with our own selves. We don't have time to be with nature and take a deep breath and just relish the crispness of the air. We don't have the time to do all of that, especially in a metropolitan city like this. When the pressures are so high and the pace is so fast, we just don't have time for ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. And that's one car, one wheel of our car, isn't it? Personal life, our health, for instance, such an important thing. But at the cost of just running, we, we forget to pay attention to our own health. The second wheel of the car is family life. Demands attention, isn't it? Your personal life demands attention. Your family life demands attention, isn't it? Before marriage, when you are in love, they call it a crush, isn't it? But after marriage, all that is left is candy crush. <laughs> all the crushes are in, gone and all that you're left with is a candy crush. Just <laughs> keep playing candy crush. <laughs> and all the headaches coming from all the pressures, one lady went to a doctor and the doctor said, how's your headache, madam? She said, he's out of town. <laughs> Gosh, I must tell you. Demands a lot of attention. Your personal life, the first tire, do you have one? Do you have a personal life is my question. Do you have time for your health? Even in my hectic schedule, I have made five days of exercise here still. In all the lectures and all the talks and everywhere I go because that's what's going to keep me going. I have to give time to myself because I don't get more than three and a half to four hours of sleep. So if I don't look at my physical fitness, I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, do you give time for yourself? Do you have time for yourself, your personal time? Or is that wheel out of balance? Is it a flat tire? The third wheel, tire of the car of life is your professional life. Your personal life needs attention. Your family life needs attention. Your professional life needs attention. And the fourth is your social life. Your friends, people around you, your colleagues, those relationships that matter a lot to you, those people who would support you in time of need. Because to your spouses, to your family, you could speak a little. Sometimes certain things are not always confided with 
just blood relationships you need that social side people to whom you can speak open up your heart how often do we just carry this baggage of stress and load anxiety and worry in our heads lugging it all around as baggage this is social side to our life our friends you know i have had those moments where i've snapped even as a monk because i'm a human being just because i put this robes of a monk doesn't mean i've become you know a celestial angel i'm still a human being when one of those ties is out of order if i haven't slept well if my health is out of place i'm going to snap out you know you carry work pressures at home you carry home pressures at work ladies and gentlemen irritability is a symptom of an out of balance life stability in our responses is a symptom of a life in balance we are irritable we snap we react at the drop of a hat for trivia just because we are out of balance people who have a balanced life know how to handle pressure people whose lives are not balanced sink under pressure and get so irritable at little things they just kind of snap off i am actually a camera shy person believe it or not you know when people shoot me and they just post some clips that's fine with me but talking to a camera it's a machine it's just some electronic machine the camera doesn't laugh the camera doesn't cry the camera doesn't have any interpersonal reciprocation in dealings and i must tell you i felt very nervous in fact a little fearful as well to speak into a camera it was more fear of failure i would say because you know when you speak into a camera and if it's really it and it's put online how do people see it otherwise when i'm with people people have seen me speak and i decided when the motive is to serve and contribute we have to face our fears we have to deal with our fears face them and rise above them at some point of time i had to decide to come and speak so one day i decided that's it i have to come speak in front of the camera the first time i did it believe me we will post that video once you must see me speaking there stiff expressionless motionless stoic nonchalant face you know and i guess i'm kind of slowly getting better because in order to deal with these fears you have to face them you have to start somewhere it's a beautiful slide when followed in life i guarantee you life will be different i guarantee you if this is applied in life we can have peaceful nights sleep here it is do you have a problem in life no then why worry do you have a problem in life yes can you do something about it yes then why worry <laughs> do you have a problem in life yes can you do something about it no then why worry <laughs> isn't it good no why worry in the journey of life as well the take off which is our birth is completely beyond our control we didn't choose our parents we didn't choose which nation we were born in we didn't choose which city we were born in we didn't choose our socio economic class we were born in we didn't choose our looks we didn't choose the religion we were born in our take off of the journey of life was completely beyond us and the landing death even that will be completely beyond us i've heard many times people telling me that they would just love to die by getting a massive heart attack and dropping dead no trouble for them no hospitalization no tubes no needles no trouble caused to others in one shot go now no matter how much we might wish that it's just beyond us how we go and how the landing happens is completely beyond us and what about the turbulence the disturbances the problems during the journey of our life 
Some of them are within our control, which we can solve. But many problems and issues and the turbulence caused is completely beyond our control because it's caused by situations which are beyond us. It's caused by people who are beyond us. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in this journey of life, the takeoff, the landing and the turbulence is not in our control. What is in our control, however, is the choices we can make. And therefore, spirituality is about learning how to make those right choices. When we learn to make those right choices, we learn to live a transformed, happy, fulfilled life despite all the turbulence and problems that are going on around us. It is said, when we are beautiful, it's God's gift to us. When we live our life beautiful, it is our gift to God. Therefore, being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of age. Being a gentleman is a matter of choice. And as a corollary to that, being a female is a matter of birth. Being a woman is a matter of age. Being a gentlewoman is a matter of choice. Let us all take to spiritual wisdom, learn to make the right choices which are within our control as our gift to God and thus live our lives as thorough and perfect ladies and gentlemen. I was telling the story the other day. This is my favorite story. I just keep sharing it all the time. This is what really happened. You can't believe this, but this happened. I came to London Heathrow once and at London Heathrow, I came to the immigration officer and this immigration officer, elderly man, he said, so what are you here for? I said, to give talks. He said, then are you living at your Watford center? I said, yeah. He said, how long will you stay here for? I said, about two weeks. Uh, he said, and can I ask you a personal question? I said, please, sir. He said, uh, are you married? I said, you are an Indian, aren't you? I'm a monk. He said, no, I was just cross-checking, just in case. And then he said, can I ask you another one, please? I said, yes. He said, are you not missing anything in life? He thought he caught me at the wrong foot. Are you not missing anything in life? I said, of course I am. He said, what? I said, problems. <laughs> you know what? He loved my answer. Believe me, hand on my heart. He stamped my passport. And as I'm walking out of the gate, he put his hand on my head. Blessing me, said, son, remain like this. <laughs> son, remain like this. You will never have to go through any issues and your problems in life. God, uh, you know what? I mean, it's nice to laugh at. But as I walked through the gate, I turned to him and told him, look, gentlemen, I must tell you something. Don't think that me as a monk is free from problems. Anyone who lives in this dog-eat, dog-live world, as they might say, or anyone who lives in this world full of rat race and pressures, whether it's you who are a student study, or one of you corporates or business people who's working, or married man or lady who's kind of dealing with family life, or myself as a monk, we are all subject to our own pressures. We are all subject to our own stresses. We are all subject to our own individual worries and anxieties. Just the flavor is different. Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because Yogesh Desai asked me to. If there's someone you'd like me to cover in a future top 10, check out the link in the description and go and cast your vote. I'd also love to know what did you learn from this video? What lesson really hit home the hardest? What are you going to immediately apply somehow to your life or to your business? Leave it down in the comments below. I'm really curious to find out. I also want to give a quick shout out to Pramad Kumar. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and taking that picture and posting it. I really, really appreciate this 
support, man, and I hope you enjoyed the read. Thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. A lady asked me after the session, in the Q&A session, Sir, you said that you were an electrical engineer. Why did you give up your career as an electrical engineer? I said, Madam, I didn't give up my career as an electrical engineer. I upgraded my career from being an electrical engineer to a lifestyle engineer. And I said to her, each of us, based on our particular faculties of knowledge, should be contributing to the world's solutions to problems. Engineering is all about offering solutions to problems. All engineers are offering solutions to problems. All bodies of knowledge offering solutions to problems. And I thought mine is one offering solutions to problems related to lifestyle. And therefore life is all about breathing. Rhythmic breathing. I was mentioning this in the Mantra Lounge last night. You can't just breathe in and keep the breath there, can you? You can't just breathe out and keep the breath there, can you? The smooth rhythm of breathing in Sanskrit is called Yajna. The fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita calls the smooth rhythm of breathing as Yajna. Where you take to give. You take, you give. It's taking in, giving out. Taking in, giving out. Yes, we must take. Because if you don't take, how will you give? If you don't feel hope, how will you bring hope to someone? If you don't feel loved, how will you bring love to someone? If you don't feel uplifted, how will you uplift someone? If you don't have resources, how will you share resources with others? So have, take, be successful, earn a lot, get there and serve. Give your time, give your resources, give your mind, give hope, give love, give something. Money is not wealth. Money is just a part of wealth. And you must have it, obviously. All of you are looking forward to having money, and you must obviously have it, but it's just a part of wealth. 2nd of February, 2005. I was lying in a monastery, in a rashtra, on the wooden floor, exhausted, tired from the anxiety last night. And suddenly a fellow monk, one of my friends, came up to me and woke me up, saying, he's leaving. He's leaving. I got up, gathering myself together, rushing to go to the room where my dear friend, Stoka Krishnadas, was leaving his body. Memories were flashing through my mind as I was rushing towards this room. He was a monk with me, had stayed together, we stayed together. At a certain point, he had decided to move on and get married. He went out, he had taken a job in the hospital we run, the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, as the librarian. He had just gotten married, his wife was pregnant. And while the wife was pregnant, he was diagnosed with melanoma cancer. <laughs> He decided that he wanted to leave the body in the monastery where he spent most of his time. We had brought him to our monastery. As this memory flashed in my mind and I was rushing there, I remembered every day I went to sing God's names to him on the harmonium. My tearful eyes. As I cried, seeing a dear friend struggling with melanoma cancer, every single time I looked at him, my vision was blurred because it was someone so dear. Yet, this gentleman was amazing. He had a beaming face. All the excruciating pain that he went through hadn't affected his determined resolve. You look at his face. Look at that smile. No morphine was working on him. I realized this stuff works. His wife had given birth to a baby girl. They brought the baby girl to right next to him. It was the last time she would see him. It was the last time his wife would ever be with him. Ladies and gentlemen, as I walked to the room, my guru, Radhanath Swami, the author of the popular book, The Journey Home, was right next to him, giving him hope. 
I was astounded. Inside the little room, there were so many people. I was standing right next to him with my Guru Radhanath Swami. Outside were 450 members of our community, all together chanting the names of God. What I saw here was a man who didn't have a Lamborghini. What I saw here was support. What I saw here was people. People who were there to financially support him. People who were there to medically support him. People who were there to spiritually support him. People who were there to emotionally support him. I was amazed at the kind of support this man had. You know something? When you're born, people love you. And when you die, people love you. In between, you have to manage. <laughs> <laughs> and this man had managed truly really well. He had invested so much in relationships with his people that when he was in dire need, people had come to him. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is important for us to have support. Wealth doesn't just mean money. Wealth means money plus people and support. One gentleman said, do you know what's the difference between complete and finished? He said, if you find the right partner, you're complete. If you find the wrong partner, you're finished. <laughs> but if you find the right one catching you with the wrong one, you're completely finished. <laughs> so, we definitely need partners. We definitely need friends. We definitely need professional therapists. We definitely need people who can support us. And therefore, I say if you want to talk truly how rich you are, drop a tear and see how many hands come forth to wipe that tear. That's how rich you actually are. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.